How does a treasure wallet actually keep your crypto safe? This simple question rarely gets broken down into detail. So this video is for people who know that Trezor devices help protect your crypto, but aren't completely clear on all the technical specifics. Kicking us off is point zero. Most of you probably know this already, but Trezor devices take your Bitcoin access offline. This is already a huge step for security because it protects you from having your funds frozen or mishandled, which can happen on an exchange, or even worse, an exchange collapse, both of which have happened in the history of crypto. Moving on to more specific examples, Point one is that Trezor devices keep you safe by protecting user data. User data sounds like a broad term, especially since that phrase gets thrown a lot these days, but I'll speak plainly. User data means you, you and your data, along with every other person using our devices. The cool thing about Trezor devices is that we don't track them and it's never connected to you in any way. Keep in mind, that doesn't mean your transactions can't be traced to you. If you put all of your personal information on an exchange and then send funds from an account tracked by that exchange to your device, those transactions will have your info tied to them. Out of the box, however, Trezor doesn't require any personal data to you. Point two is security provided by the physical device itself. The most basic and underrated form of physical protection is the ability to change the home screen background and name of your device. If someone swaps your device with another, the change will be obvious when you boot it up, making it a clear signal of the switch. Additionally, our devices are ultrasonically welded together during production. The pieces are literally fused with heat generated from the vibrations of industrial machines. This doesn't make your device completely impenetrable, but it does mean you're protected from low level attacks. Most people aren't at risk of professional or high level attacks. So if you consider yourself safe from such things, it can help you deduce information in a situation where you're suspicious of tampering. However, if someone does manage to physically break into your device, our safe series has a secure element built in, which is a component that's set to destroy the information it contains if tampered with. And this is after pin codes, passphrase wallets, and firmware updates, all of which keep your device protected on an everyday level. Then there's the authentication check. Most people cruise right over this without a second thought during the device setup, but it's a critical step to make sure no one ends up with a fake device. This video doesn't need a full technical breakdown of how the authentication process works, but if you're curious, check it out on our knowledge base. By the way, that's true for most of these topics. We make these videos because people prefer a visual format, but you can always get more details or a technical breakdown on our website. Also, we're on point four now. I didn't actually say point three out loud because I like to be quirky and not like the other boys. Point four is the secure element that thing I briefly mentioned a minute or two ago. This didn't exist on our first two devices, the Trezor Model 1 or Model T, but we added it for our safe series, the Trezor Safe 3 and Safe 5 as an additional layer of security. There's a lot going on underneath the hood and various reasons for why this is a security improvement. But you can basically think of the secure element as a box with a key inside that unlocks your funds. Instead of having your pin code directly request information from the chip on your Trezor device, the pin instead unlocks the secure element, which itself provides a key to then access your device. This is an additional layer of security on the software side, separate from the physical protection mentioned earlier. And keep in mind, this is all before adding a passphrase to your account, which negates the effects of someone getting into your account in the first place. Passphrase was also literally the first video of our TikTok account if you wanna learn more. That's all for today. Like I said before, you can find all of this information and more on our website at trezor.io learn if you wanna know more. Stay safe and stay educated.